Hey everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day and today I'll be reviewing When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandhya Menon. I've heard so many great things about this book and I think Simon & Schuster is really going ham with the marketing for this book and for good reason, it's a pretty special novel. I did have a few issues with it but it's one of those books where I see the appeal, like I can understand why someone would really really love this book, and so I appreciate it for what it's worth. When Dimple Met Rishi is a story about two Indian American kids, a girl named Dimple and a boy named Rishi, who are both about to head off to college, Dimple to Stanford, and Rishi to MIT. Dimple is an ambitious girl who wants to be the top of her field of web development and coding, and she resents her mother's constant nagging for Dimple to find her ideal Indian husband. Rishi is going to MIT to study computer science and engineering, but he's actually really passionate about drawing and art. And unlike Dimple, Rishi isn't really opposed to tradition or customs, and instead he embraces that and sees it as a source of beauty. So both Dimple and Rishi head off to this summer camp competition for app development called InsomniaCon. So Rishi goes to InsomniaCon to woo Dimple, who is actually his potential future wife in a suggested arranged marriage. But the thing is, Dimple has no clue that her parents have set up this arranged marriage, and she has no idea who Rishi is. And the rest of this novel follows the relationship between Dimple and Rishi over the course of this six-week summer camp, and there are heavy doses of romance and humor, as well as great themes like culture and identity. So I loved a lot of things about this story. Firstly, of course, I have to talk about the diversity element. Our two leads, both Dimple and Rishi, are Indian American, and that experience is written in such an authentic manner. Being raised in an Indian family really affects a lot of things in your life, from what you wear, to what you eat, to the movies that you reference, to the way you view your life plan and your role in your family dynamic, and so on and so forth. And Sandhya Menon depicts that layered experience very deftly and very seamlessly. I also thought that she was very careful and very respectful about the topic of arranged marriage. Something I learned about in one of the classes I've taken in college, in one of my Women and Gender Studies classes, is this idea of cultural relativism. And cultural relativism was a term that I'd heard before and I knew a little bit about it, but I didn't really put it into practice and I didn't have to put it into practice until some of the topics that we covered in that class. So after learning about the value of actually implementing cultural relativism in that course, it made me read When Dimple Met Rishi in a kind of different way. I think Sandhya Menon does a great job of representing cultural relativism through her character of Rishi. So take a thing or a concept that the more western perspective might find backwards or sexist, such as arranged marriage. And Rishi takes that and he explains the value that that kind of practice might have to a people of a different background. So the fact that Sandhya brings that perspective through Rishi's character was very interesting to read about. Because I think a lot of us, like Dimple in the book, have very western mind frames and we have very progressive ideas and we think that things like arranged marriage are very outdated and backwards and unfair. And of course there's an argument for that and there's validity in that opinion, but what's really refreshing is that we also get to see the other side of it and we get to see the value of this kind of practice or we get to see someone who appreciates it for what it's worth and we get that through Rishi. And speaking of that particular women and gender studies class, something else that we talked about is what it means to be a good feminist and how much of a struggle that actually is. So this particular WGS professor that I had, she was obviously very feminist, but she also is married to a man and has a child and wears dresses and heels to work and she really falls into all these different gender stereotypes. These stereotypes and these practices that other feminists are trying their hardest to destabilize. But does that make her a bad feminist? Given that we're all feminists, are we bad feminists if what we desire and what we're actively working towards is a gender stereotype or a traditional idea of what a female should be? Sandhya Menon brings up this discussion through her character of Dimple, who is very outspokenly feminist, very eager to call out her mother for her mother's misogyny. Like I said before, she's an ambitious girl and she really loves coding, which is a very heavily male-dominated field. And she rejects this idea of prioritizing romance and finding a husband in favor of building an impressive career. She starts off very intent on making decisions for herself and only herself to further her career and her education. However, as her relationship with Rishi goes on, she has this struggle of wanting to focus on her career, but also wanting to invest in this whirlwind romance. And if she wants to dress uncharacteristically girly for a date with Rishi, does that make her unfeminist? 
if what she ends up choosing is romance, if she is making her decisions, keeping in mind the considerations of pursuing and continuing this relationship with Rishi, is that unfeminist? If she sacrifices parts of her career for this boy, is that unfeminist? That's such an interesting and nuanced discussion that I haven't really seen discussed very often in YA literature, and so I really applaud Sandhya for incorporating that kind of topic into her novel. The romance is, if you couldn't tell, the main element of the story. The actual plot, this summer camp competition, kind of does take a back seat and Sonia Menon really focuses her craft and her attention on this blossoming romance between Rishi and Dimple. The thing about writing about love is that it is so fertile for beautiful writing, and Sonia Menon really takes advantage of that. She uses a lot of creative and gorgeous figurative language when describing the romance. However, that being said, it can be a little cheesy and a little overdone sometimes. And I have a theory that the detection of how cheesy the writing is is really dependent on how much you buy into Rishi and Dimple's romance. I think about this a lot when it comes to Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell, which is my favorite Rowell book and one of my favorite books of all time. In that book especially, Rainbow Rowell writes a lot of seriously heavy, deeply emotional, very romantic stuff. And I ate it all up because I loved that relationship and I really believed in it. For Rishi and Dimple, on the other hand, I couldn't always stomach it because I wasn't really completely on board with their relationship. I think the main reason that I wasn't really convinced by the relationship between Dimple and Rishi was really just because I had so many issues with Dimple. I can really understand the appeal of Rishi. He is such a sweet and thoughtful boy, kind of like Cricket from Lola and the Boy Next Door, just out of this world thoughtfulness and kindness. So I can understand loving Rishi. But Dimple, on the other hand, she was just kind of infuriating. I felt like she was just so self-righteous. She lacked that same empathy and sensitivity that made Rishi so charming and appealing. Dimple was very wishy-washy, she was very judgmental, she was very harsh. She hits Rishi a lot too, which I don't think is cute at all. Like, here's a tip, try not to hit people. Here's another tip, if you hit someone and you don't mean to physically hurt them, and they wince anyway, you probably hurt them, and you should probably stop hitting them. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are so many things about Dimple that are admirable, but overall, I just couldn't get behind her character, and so reading all this mushy-gushy stuff that Rishi thinks about Dimple, it just didn't gel with me. Something else that I wasn't that big of a fan of was the dual point of view. The narrator switches in short bursts between Dimple's point of view and Rishi's point of view. I think I would have preferred just being in one person's mind the entire time. And if we did stick with dual POV, I would have preferred longer sections from each person's point of view, because when you have such short bursts of each character's point of view, we're kind of being shown all the cards and there's not really anything left to guess. There's just too much instant gratification, I think. Something that's extremely nitpicky, and I like can't even believe that I'm bringing this up in a review, like it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but for this book it was, was chapter breaks. I don't think I've ever mentioned having a problem with chapter breaks in a review before, but in this book, the chapter breaks made no sense and they just ended up really irritating me after a while. Like who in their right mind is paying attention to chapter breaks, right? No one. Because they're usually not noticeable. But in this book, the chapter breaks drove me insane. The chapter breaks honestly served no purpose. Sometimes there would be a chapter break, but on either side of the chapter break, it was the same scene in the same person's point of view. You literally you literally could have deleted the chapter break and it would have been a continuously flowing paragraph. Like, why would you break it up there? I don't get it. Like telling literally the next second of a scene in the same person's point of view, but there's a separation there. You had to change chapters there. I don't get it. I don't get it. And the more frequently it happened, the more frustrated I got. And believe me, I get it. I hear it. I hear how ridiculous I sound complaining about something like chapter breaks. But I, I just didn't get it. I don't... I, why? Why would you start a new chapter when it's the same exact scene from the same exact character's point of view? Okay, moving on. Dimple and Rishi each get a lot of care and a lot of attention from the author, but the side characters tend to be a little lackluster. Most of the side characters just felt very dimensionless. There's a character named Isabella who's kind of an antagonist, and she has a little bit more depth than what we get to see initially, and I honestly would be pretty interested in reading something from her point of view because from that little bit of depth that we get to see, she seems like a really fascinating character. So if Sonia Menon ever feels up for writing a spinoff book about her, 
I'd be down. So there are a lot of great things going for when Dimple met Rishi. A side note, I'm a little upset that the girl on the cover isn't wearing glasses because Dimple does wear glasses. But yeah, this book has a handful of really great things going on for it, as well as a few things that just didn't work out for me. I still think Sandia Menon is a very promising writer, and if this book sounds like something that's up your alley, I would recommend giving it a read. If you have already read this book, please let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. I would really, really love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and happy reading. Bye!